and we welcome you to the uh, today's meeting. And we will have uh, first any online introductions, and then we'll go around the room so that they know who else is here. Do we have somebody I'm online? Anderson and I'm in Austin. Okay. Is that all of them for online? Okay. Um, why don't we start with Monica and go around? Monica Erickson, public, um, that feels public. <laughs> I'm starting to read my tag. <laughs> okay. The end of the day. The end of the day. Tyler Irvin, Selco. Donovan Lambright, Selco. Michael Scott, Selco. Ann Hutton, Selco, and Tell. James Hills, and Broda. Pat Johnson, Stewartville. Cheryl Hill, Selco. Peggy Havener, Albert Lee. John Piper, Ordnance. Uh, Charlie Sparks, Preston. And let's see, do we have any additions or changes to the agenda? If not, I'll ask for a motion to approve it. So moved. And a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And next, we'll move on to input from online library elected representative. I have some input. OK, Ann. This, um, our librarians from Austin, and I, so I'm, I'm inputting just from Austin. Um, we were talking about the way that the um, that the catalog searches now and the search results. And um, we've reported some unusual things. And I know that it is proprietary software. But we just want to express our frustration with the keyword searching. Um, we're not very happy with it. And um, you know we're pretty easy going, I think. Um, but uh, we've just had some so things. Think the results don't seem to come the way that uh, we would expect them um, to. So we've been disappointed. So Cheryl, this um, and this is Cheryl. I would encourage you to send me specific examples, and perhaps I can help you understand why you're saying what you're saying. Um, or I yeah. something crazy. I can certainly contact Cersei Dynex and find out more. Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll send those things in. I think a lot of it has been keyword searching with results not coming up to the top the way that we would expect, especially like if you add in like DVD or, you know, I think we've sent in some examples, but I'll encourage everyone to send in more. Yes, there, there were some on the forums that I have been meaning to respond to, and I'm sorry I haven't gotten to those yet. I will get to those tomorrow afternoon for sure. Um, oh, if there, there's no rush. I just wanted, in case anybody else was feeling that way, or if you know, just you wouldn't know unless we spoke up. Okay. Um, yeah. Usually, the first place I do look is the bid record, so I will start there, and then if there is um, more hints, I can I I can keep going and try and find more information and get back to you. Great. Okay. Do we have anybody else? Um, I do have one thing I was just thinking about. Um, in a recent discussion with our county, we're talking about some statistics and things. Uh, my, my county has consistently been interested in obtaining from overdrive statistics broken out by residency. Because they want to know essentially what borrowers are checking out ebooks as part of rural population. Um, and currently, we don't have that available. And I think I've been told that proprietary data, is this is that true? And if not, can we start breaking out based on BSTAT with overdrive? I would have to check with them again. I remember discussing it earlier, but I don't remember the details. This is Ann. My guess is, is that the answer will be no, just because as we have found in dealing with some other overdrive-related statistics, um, they lock down access to the da data more than I think they should, based on the fact that it is um, they are cell patrons. 
and CELCO data. CELCO in, the, in, its, in, the, in, its, in its broadest context, not CELCO this building, but CELCO, i.e. your data. As well as the connection with Horizon, although they seem to have a fairly good relationship with Cersei Dynics at this point. So my guess is the answer will be no, but um, my guesses are usually wrong. So let Tyler check. Sure. Well, it's I just, great for us, too, because we're the only library in the county, and if I can show the county how many of their residents are using overdrive, that would be huge. Well, I know just from my response at the time was that there is some proprietary stuff behind this, and they that overdrive controls the data. But in some sense, that wasn't really acceptable to the county, and I can understand why, because they're sort of like, well, you're paying for a database, and you're not getting statistics that you need to prove whatever. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to bring it up. Yep. I, I, hey, I would agree with the county. That well, I, I, necessarily makes sense. I had, yeah, I mean, and I had jokes, but I was like, well, you're right. If you used to start working with enterprise, would that then bring it to the point where you could do the report on it? No. No? Okay. But let's let Tyler check to make sure that... Check on that. Overdrive does provide some reports. So we'll oh, it, check and see what we can get. Statistical ones, they just don't break it. They break it out by library, but not by B stats. Now the problem is they don't have access to our B stats at this point, so... With the API, they might, they might be able to now. Anybody else? Uh, we've had some people join our meeting, so maybe we should have them quick introduce themselves, and we'll start up here. Uh, <coughs> Brad Hoggins, the Lord. Mary Kay Belt is on a public library and a large public library representative. Okay. And so we'll move on. No, do we have to accept that? No, I had a star. I was confused. Um, it, it starts because it's an action item in the sense of if they, they, the people in this room are taking action, they're talking. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, we'll move to the technology project report from Donovan. All right. Um, <clears throat> we have a short list today um, since we're just coming off the enterprise project and it's starting to gear up now with some other things. Um, as usual, we have cooperative technology purchases going on. Uh, the order forms for the spring purchase went out on April 1st and were due back on April 28th. 21 PCs and related items were purchased by 16 libraries and deployments are in progress. Uh, we are still continuing the Pharos upgrades that I've talked about at a few previous meetings. Uh, last week when I put these slides up, uh, 13 out of the 22 libraries had been upgraded. Um, we are going a little slow on the upgrades because some of them we're holding off so that we can do them in conjunction with uh, cooperative purchase deployments to save on travel time. So we probably could have burned through these a little faster, but we're trying to reduce our road time. And the upgrades are really not that time sensitive. We are busily trying to move our WordPress sites to uh, SiteGround, which is a cloud-based provider. Um, the goal there is to not have those on a web server here, which insulates the websites a little bit from bad weather, internet outages, mysterious outbreaks of plague, anything that could happen here that would affect um, our building. Um, and that should reduce maintenance costs because they'll be doing some of that maintenance for us. Um, they worry a little bit more about security, for example. Not that we can completely ignore it, but at least we're not dealing with machine security and things like that. Um, and hopefully it should improve uptime. Um, in the event of a problem here, the websites should not go down, which just gives us one more way to communicate and also make sure that you're still communicating with your patrons. Um, the Selco website is part of this project. So we uh, began in April. Um, at this point, we've got six out of the 33 sites migrated. Um, Terry will kind of zip along and everything will go fine, and then he'll have one where the database doesn't work properly because, of course, WordPress is just a big database. Um, and then he'll have to dig into it and find out why. Um, he's been dealing with a lot of problems, um, dealing with themes 
that are maybe not commonly used. And so the uh, site ground servers hang up on them. There's been a lot of that kind of thing. Just a lot of little nitpicky bug kinds of issues. So far, nothing that could not be resolved. Um, just takes a little bit of time. The way this works, there will be no changes to your website domains or URL. So if you're sombroda.com, which is not a real example, but it works, um, that's not going to change. Um, also, no downtime will be experienced by the sites when they're migrated. Um, the only, what you could maybe call downtime is, is that for two to three days while we make the transition, staff cannot update the websites. But other than that, the websites do stay up and continue working. So we're um, just going to keep working on that throughout the summer and um, get those all moved. And then that will enable us to decommission one of our larger servers which will just make things that much better in the server room. Okay, any questions? I think I had one last one. Um, the Selco Automation Sorry. Forums, I talked about this last week at the users group meeting. Um, we're really excited about it. Um, this will be an open forum for all library staff as well as Selco staff to discover, discuss excuse me, uh, Selco technology services. Um, this is a direct outgrowth of the project I just talked about. Um, SiteGround provides us, at no additional cost, access to forum software. Now, the software itself is free and open source. It's commonly in use on the web, uh, PHP BB, for those of you who have been around on this kind of thing. Um, but the benefit here, much like the website, is we didn't have to install a server. We didn't have to set the software up. It's just all ready to go as part of our SiteGround service. So. Um, we're trying to take advantage of that. Um, we're going to launch that on June 3rd. And that's the end, I think. Yes. So any questions or comments? Does anybody have to change their um, WordPress theme? Um, as far as I know, we haven't had to change any yet. But we have, in some cases, had to make some tweaks. And that's when Terry has to kind of slow down and go into intense one-on-one -on -one working mode with whoever um, at the library deals with the websites. And so far they've been able to get it accomplished in every case. It just sometimes takes a while. So common themes are good themes. I am worried. My theme has not been updated for ages, but I really, really like it. <laughs> <laughs> that is a potential red flag. Um, one of the more common issues is older themes that have not been updated and don't work as well on the newer versions of WordPress. Um, Part of maintaining security and functionality um, for SiteGround is that they're, they're very quick to keep upgrading you as WordPress comes out with new versions, which is actually one of the benefits of the service. That's one of the primary ways you protect your website from um, compromise. But yeah, if you've got a theme out there that isn't widely used and hasn't been worked on for a while by its developer, that could be a problem. That can happen. It's time. It just took a long time to agree on that one. <laughs> to go through that again. Well, don't don't do anything preemptive. No, I won't. We'll, we'll, we'll try to migrate it, and maybe it'll work. Um, but if it doesn't, you kind of know in the back of your head this is possible. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Okay, I don't know who's speaking first. Donovan and Cheryl are giving us an update, and I can't remember how to pronounce that, so I'm not going to try. And <laughs> we haven't really talked or coordinated at all on this, <laughs> so you want to go ahead? Okay, um, so Donovan and I went to Kosugi, so that's customers of um, Dynamics. Dynamics. Yeah, user group. Thanks. I was, I was looking for Horizon, and it wasn't in there. <laughs> Um, so customers of Cersei Dynex user group, um, they're obviously the vendor that owns the iOS system that we run, Horizon. Um, uh, I, I tended to go to a lot of Horizon focused sessions. I went to one or two enterprise sessions. Um, but the, the, big, the big thing that's coming is that they've been working on for years is uh, their blue cloud suite. So um, the Blue Cloud Suite is basically a way of getting the client into a web-based version of the client. And their first 
major product of that is going to be blue cloud cataloging so that you will be able to do cataloging um, in a web-based environment with um, you know, your MARC record from your Horizon database, and the example they showed was Horizon, not Symfony, their other product, um, here. And then on your monitor, you could pull up the OCLC record or the LC record, and you could drag and drop fields. You could merge records, and it would all be on your browser. You hit the Save button, and it saves down to your database. So it's really slick. It's been talked about, like I said, for a couple of years, but it looks like it's really coming this August. So the first release will likely not be something that all of the libraries will be able to utilize, but we'll certainly try to get our hands a hold of that as soon as we can so we can start testing it out. I know there's some issues with authority work um, in Blue Cloud cataloging. Uh, then they're going to CERC, the mobile uh, Blue Cloud CERC, and then they're going to do a serials, and then someday they're going to work on an acquisition version. So I'm, or I might have those last two reversed, but for us it's not that. You know, we need cataloging in CERC. So um, in order to get this to work with Horizon, kind of part of the big news is that they've had to completely rewrite Horizon's web services. Um, web services is that thing that makes your item availability show up in real time on enterprise, for example. They've had to completely rewrite that, um, which they have been doing, and it looks like that's pretty much done at this point, and they're moving it off of, right now it lives on HIP, and they're moving it off of HIP um, to another place. So that was really exciting to see that it's actually working and that it's actually working on Horizon. Um, other than that, I went to a lot of Horizon sort of admin sessions where I learned a lot of stuff. So um, I learned a lot of back-end things. My, my favorite thing that I learned is Control Alt Shift D if you have a local installation will pull up a debugger and that's called the claw. So it just shows you what Horizon is doing, like what tables it's pulling from the SQL database in the background and stuff like that. So it helps me do some of the things I need, some of my tasks and reports a little quicker. So so I learned that. I learned how to do a lot of automated type of tasks. So. It was really, um, I got a lot out of it. And I also um, networked with other Horizon libraries and other Horizon libraries in Minnesota and other consortiums like us all over the state. So now I have friends that I can ask questions. So. So, oh, and I did go to a session at the last day that I wanted to mention that was on enterprise consortial sharing, which was basically everybody in the room saying what they didn't like about enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> And there was a developer in the room, and I had a list that we had prepared ahead of time. Um, and everything on the list got marked or got discussed in that session. So the problems we're having, we're not the only ones, but um, they are listening at least. So and developing still. Um, so as Cheryl mentioned, one of the main focuses of the conference was their Blue Cloud Suite, uh, this set of web-based clients that they intend to replace the existing clients, at least for users that don't need very sophisticated access to the tools. Um, Cheryl did a pretty good job of talking about those. I attended a session about what they call Blue Cloud Analytics, which is the reporting tool that's part of this. It is intended to be a replacement for Web Reporter, but it is still based on the Web Reporter engine. So we will see what that actually entails. Um, it's not out in general release yet. It is about to go into pilot testing at a number of libraries, and uh, we'll be watching that pretty closely. Much like Web Reporter, though, it is going to be not free and fairly expensive. So how quickly we'll be making the move, I don't know. Um, some of the problems we have with Web Reporter right now stem from the fact that we just cannot afford to purchase a license for every single library. And so we've had to do some aggregating and creative things with the database that contributes in some part to how unuser friendly Web Reporter can be. So we may have some of those same issues, but I hope not. What I saw of it looked pretty good. Um, I think probably the most interesting thing about it is the way the data works. Um, this is being developed so that you can bring non-Horizon and Symfony data schema into it. 
So theoretically, if you have an Excel spreadsheet of um, people who walked in your door, you theoretically should be able to load that up. And as long as you can explain to the database how the data is formatted, you can run reports against it correlated with other Horizon stats. Um, if you've got an access database, which we don't tend to use a lot, but you could load that in in a similar way. Theoretically, according to them, if you have tick marks on a pad <laughs> on your desk showing how many people were using an internet station, you theoretically could put that in too, probably by typing it up in a spreadsheet. Um, Cersei Dynix is uh, loading publicly accessible data from all 50 state public library reports and the census with the idea that you would be able to run horizon statistics against those data sources as well. So it's all really exciting and it sounds really cool. Um, the usual pattern here is that when you start hearing about something really cool, wait about three years and it might come out for a general release. Um, so I don't want anyone to get too excited about that, but it was an interesting product. Um, consortia were pretty well represented at this. Um, Cheryl mentioned some of the consortial sessions. Um, I was at another session um, that also dealt with enterprise and consortia, which was one consortia that was not unlike us, outlining some of the issues they had run across in enterprise with multiple profiles, much like we do. And I don't know if you're going to consider this good news or bad news, but most of the issues we've identified, they have as well. And so do all the other consortia. So we're not running across anything that's particularly new or unusual. Some of those, at least the worst of them, are supposed to be fixed this summer in um, the next general release of the enterprise software. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. Um, we had a meeting with uh, our account representative and our library relations manager. And I talked to them a little bit about their software testing process. Because some of the problems we're seeing were so immediate and so huge that I have a hard time believing that the scenario of Horizon in a consortia was tested. <laughs> um, I wish I could tell you I got some concrete bit of information about that, but I really didn't. But I have at least raised the issue. Um, attended some interesting sessions that didn't necessarily pertain to um, There was a really good session on network management. I came away with a few ideas for tools and tricks uh, to help the systems team keep on so that maybe we can catch problems before you catch them. So that was um, kind of fun. And let's see. And then uh, one other session that I really wanted to make a point of mentioning was from um, a county library system that's doing some interesting things with pulling data out of their horizon system and warehousing it for data mining later. So I picked up some interesting things there. I think the other session that I would mention that I went to was a uh, three libraries that are doing a pilot of Cersei Dynex Mobile Circ product. Um, Mobile Circ is basically a, it's kind of it's going to be like the Blue Cloud Circ, where it's a sort of a trimmed down version of the circulation client, including an offline mode. Um, but it's designed to work, it can work in a browser, but it's designed to work on a mobile device with Bluetooth. Um, and if your mobile device has a data plan, you could also rely on your data plan to connect to the internet or Wi-Fi. Um, the three libraries that were sort of giving their experiences were using it. One was using it primarily on a bookmobile at Rural Stop. The other one was using it at um, outreach services like programs in a park or something like that to register borrowers. Um, she said one of their schools had borrowed it, borrowed their mobile surf devices to, um, to register kids at a book fair. Um, and then there was the third library was using it for internal inventories and other processes. So um, it was really interesting to see them use this device that it's just software that works on your iPad and has little tiny blue scanner that works like a barcode and sits on a lanyard and there's a, a hip um, a hip size printer so you could do your pull list with it. Really cool. Yeah. So yeah. Sorry, I'm finished. I totally jumped in. I was, done. I was, done. <laughs> I was so excited. Um, that one is in pilot right now and I think they said after the end of the year is what they're saying. Oh, that'll be 
in June. That's, the, that's going yeah. to be in the next general release. Uh, which is supposed to come out this summer. And and just to be clear, it is working with enterprise now. It's just that there's a catastrophic bug that keeps it from working with consortia using Horizon and Enterprise. So that bug is to be fixed in this next release in June. I don't think it's any consortium. Oh, is this something? I thought it was just Horizon. Yeah, okay. it, um, you, can't, you can only find your e-books under the default or the cell phone profile. You can't find right. e-books if you're searching with an OATANA limit, and that's being fixed. So then I don't have to have 400,000 item records in there. Kind of gets back to that multi-profile environment that seems to be throwing them for such a loop. That and the general release 6 throughout June will also have more integration with OverDrive so that you won't have to go OverDrive to see what you have checked out. From OverDrive, you'll be able to see that right in Enterprise. So you'll be able to download your material, check it out, and renew it if you can renew it and see what you have sure, checked out. Concept. All in the same like area. Yep. So, yeah. Keep you in one place so you don't go away right. from the library. <clears throat> That's, I think, it for, for that. Okay, thank you. And next we'll move on then to the online library participation review. And I believe Anne got the short straw and yeah. <laughs> took it away from Donovan. <laughs> this, this, we didn't know what to call this on the agenda. Um, it really probably is more narrowly focused on updating the online library contracts. Every online library, when they, if you were already on the SOCO system and part of the ERA when we migrated to Horizon, you signed a contract in March of 2003. Any libraries that have come on since then have signed the same agreement. Um, I've never liked, personally liked, the agreement. It was written by our consultant, and I always found it somewhat confusing because it lists some, you know, library responsibilities in the contract, and then some library responsibilities in the appendix, and the lists are not necessarily mutually exclusive or inclusive. And it and, and it does the same thing with SOCO responsibilities, and it's it's about a 25-page document. So it just seemed time that as we were now going into 15 years, um, 10, 12 years on this system, that it would be probably time to simply update the contract language to reflect um, actually even just the correct company name um, as to what it is that we're doing. So Donovan and I have a task to sit down one summer day when we go back from vacation, and just look at this from a house cleaning perspective. So it's nothing new as far as nothing to do with fees or services, or it's it's just the fact that it's um, probably time to take a look at a document that has an ongoing automatic renewal that goes on for forever, and it's probably good periodically for people to look at a contract once in a while. So we will bring something back to you at a future meeting. And I'm not sure why we didn't just call it automation contracts on the agenda, because that's really what it is. Um, sorry, I don't know. That must have been a day when I was like really wanting a lot of words. <laughs> Any questions? So we're trying to make it simple. And you know, we've got response times that were part of the original RFP. And we really do just want this to be an update. Okay, that one was short. Can you make it shorter than 25? Oh, <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and why, why five appendices? It's like, okay, you know, if, it, if an appendix is attached to a contract, it's part of the legal document. So why not just incorporate it? I think I want the 25-page one, because I'm not allowed to sign contracts in my team manager's going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> So you have to go a note in your file, you know, um, on go and keep the old document. Yes, you know, and and ask him to compare to you. So we'll do that one in the same quantity. Yeah, yeah. We'll do that one in the same